Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Church Leadership Lab. We are glad that you're listening to this or watching this or doing both. And we, uh, we're we grateful for another conversation today. Uh, all of the conversations that we have are with the goal of empowering healthy churches. So that's what we're hoping to do today. But before we do that, let me introduce the one and the only, my co-host, Casey Frazier. What? <laughs> like, let me introduce the one and only... Me, <laughs> my. <Myself. laughs> I yeah I I I I'm trying to I'm trying to spruce up try different things for for introducing the co-host. That would I be so like fun. That's just kind of what, what came out. Painfully arrogant, but that would be wonderful if you're like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I could do that. I think I would. I That's would not, feel it's not who you are. This is the worst. This that is, is so not crazy. Who you are? No. Yeah. I'm good. How are well, you, Scott? Uh, I am, I'm doing well. I am, um, yeah, I'm well, you know, I feel like we need some different words to define how we're doing. Like if, if we could, if we could just get a committee together to come up with like just a, just a whole new batch. Cause it's like, I'm good. I'm well, I'm fine. I'm okay. You know what I mean? If we could have like a, if like, this yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, what we should do is talk like the, the young ones today. Oh, yeah, no. I don't know. I'm mid. Doesn't mid mean like I'm like in the like I'm fine. Whatever. I don't know if I I'm not nearly cool enough to do that. Yeah, my my kids are just like on the on the edge. I have a niece and she's she knows she knows what's going on. She's the one that I'm like, hey, what does this mean? Am I using this correctly? And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm just like, you're a nerd. That. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, my, this is happening right now. So my thirteen year old. Um, but yeah, come. like I'm bananas. You know what I mean? Or I'm like. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing wild or I don't know. We just need to come up with a whole new bat. So I'm, so I'm doing, I'm doing bananas today. That's how I'm doing. How are cool. you doing? I'm, I am equally bananas. Ooh, right on. Excellent. <laughs> well, we're off to a good start. Well, we have a great conversation today uh, with Mike Poyer, uh, who is the Senior Vice President of Ministry Lending at Christian Community Credit Union. Uh, he has an extensive background in commercial lending, including nearly seven years at Patelco Credit Union, serving as the VP of Consumer and Commercial Loans. He also spent six years at the Evangelical Christian Credit Union, where he helped ministries resolve financial problems during uh, the Great Recession. And he's passionate about helping ministries grow and achieve their financial goals. And we got to sit down and talk with Mike uh, all about finances, all about um, what does it look like to have healthy finances, to grow generosity, but even things uh, you know that are right up his wheelhouse in, re in regard to lending and, and how do you approach that as a church. Um, and so, yeah, I, I thought it was a really great conversation and one that I think... Um, you know, it's helpful. Obviously, the the when you think of ministry, pastoral ministry, um, you know, financial management is probably not like high on. I don't know if they have a <laughs> course on that in seminary, right? Probably um, not. But it's so important. Yeah, probably not. But it's I so important it. as the church grows. <laughs> it's so important, right? As the church grows and as as people look to step into kind of new seasons of ministry, uh, that 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 that's something that's kind of on the forefront and thought about. I, I probably shouldn't say banks cause I know credit unions and banks are not the same, but that's kind of what I learned from Mike is I would like to take all of my personal funds away from my bank and give them to CCUCU because they are so good and better. And I learned a lot from him that I, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, he was he, he was super helpful, um, and so we're excited um, for everyone to be able to hear this conversation. So, without further ado, here's our conversation uh, with Mike Poye. Well, Mike, thanks so much for taking some time to be on the Church Leadership Lab to have this conversation with us. We appreciate it. Great. Uh, one thing we ask all of our guests: first question. There's the public bio, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that the speaker bio, the author bio, whatever yeah. it is. But there's always something that doesn't make that that all your friends, all your family would know about you. So, huh. what's that for you? Yeah, great question. And a surprise one, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even have one prepared. Right? It's like um, a fun fact when you have to introduce yourself to people yes. that they'll remember more than the important stuff. Yeah. All right. So, um, actually, everyone knows this about me if they know me personally. But, yeah, so I married my high school sweetheart. Awesome. And um, we got married. 
got married right out of college, and but we started dating our freshman year of high school. So That's we awesome. pretty much know everybody that we've ever come in contact with. There's not many people. It's like, oh, I don't know you. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And then we have four kids. So yeah. Right so, on. Right on. Um, yeah. Populating the world. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I can relate. And I don't mean to like try and one up because I'm not, I'm not <laughs> that. I, I don't like to do that. But I actually married my junior high sweetheart. Whoa. Yeah. But I didn't anyway, know that. Yeah. yeah I didn't know that. 13, so, I was 13. Uh, she was 14. No big deal. Whoa. Uh, yeah. We met. So. I can so relate. I can so, relate to it. So my wife set me up with my eighth grade girlfriend. So okay. Yeah. Oh, so you met. Yeah, you so met. We knew each other in seventh. Okay, grade that counts. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't date yeah. until our freshman year. My wife only had three kids though. You have four, so, yeah, so you win. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Cannot relate to either one of you at all anymore. Hey, I'm out. Hey, that's all right. Um, no, that's that's awesome. Appreciate you sharing that. Well, one of the things we want to kind of jump in and, and talk all about is is all things finance stewardship. Um, uh, when it comes to churches and ministries and our church leaders. Now, I know that, um, you know, economically over the last few years, even where we're at right now, there's instability, there's, you know, uh, there's, there's all sorts of things going on. And I know that, that obviously affects churches, but what are some, maybe what are some, some trends or some things that you've seen when it comes to giving and generosity in the church as we've kind of gone through, you know, these, these ups and downs, is there anything that, that you've kind of noticed or, or you all seen in the churches that you've been working with? Yeah. Um, actually it's, we've actually seen churches during the pandemic started actually seeing giving was actually moving on the upward trend for them. Okay. And so a lot of churches were benefiting, especially those that were open bringing people in, yeah. they were actually benefiting from it. And so, and as you guys know, online giving was a big part of that. Yeah. And so we saw a big trend of moving towards online giving platforms and using those online giving platforms and giving was actually increasing for ministries. Yeah. And what we saw with ministries is they're actually, their cash reserves were growing during that period of time, Okay. which I think is helping now with the whole inflationary factors that they're dealing with now. Things are just more expensive. They're having to pay people more, yeah. those type of things. So some of those reserves have really helped them. Yeah. And then there was also a lot of the other programs that the churches were able to benefit from during the pandemic. Sure. And so some of those reserves are actually helping them kind of go through the inflationary, the, where costs are going up for them. So yeah. that's some of the trends we're seeing is certainly that, but the trend for online giving certainly was something that changed almost overnight for some ministries. Yeah. And, and obviously I know that we were in a season where, you know, for, for a lot of people showing up to church, putting that, you know, gift in the, yeah. the plate, the basket, the box yeah. in the back, whatever, whatever yeah. it was, yeah. wasn't an option. Right. Um, but do you think that as you step back, like adopting those digital tools is something that you see on average that increases giving um, and, and, you know, overall the, the, you know, amount that the churches are seeing given? Yeah, I, I, I do think it has had an impact in seeing some of that giving go up and also stabilizing. Um, yeah. So some of the things that you would notice with churches in seasonality is that they would see that tick down during the summer. Attendance yeah. mm-hmm. isn't there. Right. right. Where online giving doesn't have that same issue, right? Yeah. Because it's like, like for me, it's set up, it's ready to go. So whether I'm there on Sunday or not, that giving is going to happen. And I think that's been a good thing for the churches. And we've seen that yeah. the seasonality hasn't, we haven't seen the kind of the ups and downs that we used to see in the past. Yeah. yeah like your family went on vacation, but the internet didn't. Right. <laughs> like exactly. It's still yeah. there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Now, one thing that I'm, I would love to get your thoughts on because, because I think anytime you roll out either a new tool or a digital tool, sometimes that adoption, you know, people jumping onto it can be difficult. So obviously, as we talked about, man, the more that you can have on giving through the internet that never takes a vacation, right. um, uh, you know, can really help in that stewardship. So is there, if a church leader is really struggling with getting their church to adopt that and yeah. to kind of either set up recurring giving or use that digital platform, what would you tell them? How would you kind of encourage them to maybe increase that adoption? Sure. Yeah, no, great question. I, I think for, and I'll even, the my own church that I attend, you know, one, it's just being open to have that discussion and one, mm. making sure to let them know it's okay. Mm-hmm. Because I think yeah. we all did, you know, when we transitioned from putting something in the offering, play basket, whatever, yeah. um, 
that was a transition and people were like, oh, this is kind of weird. I, I, it is feels weird, right? When all of a sudden it goes by and you do nothing. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, wow. Um, are people going to think something like what's up? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So Ooh, I notice Mike didn't put anything in right. there. Did you <laughs> exactly. see that? Right. So I think from that piece is, and I think my pastor does a great job with it is one, no, he uses it personally, mm. right? He set it up and making sure that those are the conversations and making sure to be open to have that conversation. Mm. Um, and I think that's the, probably the best way to approach it yeah. is through that because it is it, in the beginning it's weird but once you're used to doing that and mm-hmm. that's what you're doing and i think for me and my family it's been a great tool for us yeah well i think that it, it's interesting we talked about the passing of the play that there's probably because that's what, how it's been done so long there's almost something that feels more sacred yeah. about that yeah. versus like well this is the same way that you know i order my DoorDash and <laughs> my Amazon and That's my, ev- you yeah. know, everything else. And so I wonder too, if there's a sense of this doesn't feel as like much, reverent. Yeah. As yeah. a reverent worshipful act, which right. obviously giving and generosity is, mm-hmm. is coming from a place of worship. Um, yeah. So I, th- I think what you're saying is like, like talk about that, even yep. it, mm-hmm. help maybe people understand like, no, it, it still is like, yeah. that's still generosity. You know. I think that's a good call out, like mentioning it in the service. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think it's very intentional, but my pastor does a great job of there's a giving moment yep. and on the screen, it's here's how to give. So he'll go ahead and say, take out your phone if that's your preferred method. Yeah. So even the people that, to your point, it's like, well, I didn't put anything in the bucket. So I'm going, I already gave because right. it's mindset. Yeah. First yeah. and the 15th, it comes out. Mm-hmm. So I'm not actively giving in that moment, yeah. but I still take my phone out. To make sure that like, everyone is like, I did, I promise. <laughs> like, yeah. There's there's a thing you want to participate. Mm-hmm. So we still have to like, create an opportunity to do something active yeah. in front of every, as a congregation. Yeah. It's a moment of worship. Yeah. And th- that's exactly where I was going to yeah. go. It is a moment of worship. Yeah. And that, this is intended to be a right. moment of worship. To understand that, hey, everything I have mm-hmm. comes from the Lord. Right. So I'm going to acknowledge that mm-hmm. through my giving. And I think whether you're doing digitally. I I also think it's important for us as individuals to, if we're going to educate our kids about this as well, is, you know, they're not seeing it in that act right there. So it's like now, now it opens up discussion. And the other thing is, and what we do know is when we look at our budget, are we, where are we worshiping? Right. Mm. And it's like, Hey, we're treasures in heaven. Right. So what are the things that we're doing? And I think those are the important things to look at too. Mm. And so I, I think one, the act of worship in there, mm-hmm. but also then the education of what we're doing, why we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's a really good yeah. point. Yeah, because I, I don't think, I mean, maybe some, but I think most people don't need to be convinced of how easy, you know, yeah. and convenient mm-hmm. it is, but right. it's it's more of, yeah, understanding like, no, this is what this is. And even, um, you know, we talked about recurring giving. We had, we had a conversation recently yeah. where we were talking about how do you approach that maybe annually for people mm-hmm. who maybe I set that up three years ago mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. life's different now, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. e- in either direction yep. or, you know, and how do you kind of have those conversations, not to say, um, you know, to say in a really pastoral shepherding way of, yep. Hey, let's be mindful of that. Cause we want to live lives of generosity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were going to say something. Okay. And we almost were going to have that awkward <laughs> podcast moment where you talk at the same we, time. I talk over Scott constantly. He yeah. was actually just calling me out because I'm the one that usually does that. Well, here's it happens when you're digital. Yeah. When you do these um, digitally. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Zoom thing, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, no, you go. You no, you hear. go. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. No, you go. Yeah, I we know. do that. And sometimes you get caught in them where it's like, you can't, yes. you can't get no. out. It's like you keep going back and forth. So no. the over politeness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'm oversensitive about it. I was like, oh, we're going to have one. Oh, no. I, yeah. I'll step in. I genuinely do have a question if you don't. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. I, I mean, I have. I have. We them. have lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> but please, go <laughs> That's ahead. why we're here. Yeah. I'm kind of shifting away from giving a little bit. I'm genuinely curious. This is a question I do not know the answer to. So it's not like a leading, hey, Mike. I'm like, I really don't know. You guys are a credit union specifically for the faith community. Mm-hmm. What is the difference? Like, why yeah. why would a church need or benefit from a banking institution that's specifically designed for them? Yeah. What are the differences of what they couldn't get at a commercial bank? Yeah. Is that a fair question? No, it's super fair. I question. don't know the answer. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah, it's a great question because one, it's also why I'm at Christian Community Credit Union. I assume so, there's a purpose yeah, that got so, you there. Yeah, for sure. Um, one, I think in the name itself, credit union is there. So if 
if you know anything about credit unions, credit unions were developed to serve the underserved. Mm. Mm. Um, it's the, the, the credit union movement in itself is people helping people. Okay. Um, so that's the really cool part of now take us different than any bank. Mm -hmm. Now as a credit union, that's one thing that differentiates ourselves is one more nonprofit. We are a member owned co-op. Mm -hmm. So there's no shareholders other than the members that are there. Mm -hmm. So number one, credit unions are there to serve the underserved. We started helping Baptist churches because they were, they didn't have any choices. Mm -hmm. Now we've totally expanded to all Protestant Christians, churches, and individuals. And really we exist to, our charter is to serve the Christian community. So that part, our name says it all. Mm -hmm. um, and being as a non-for-profit, we're giving back. So, awesome. and how credit unions typically give back is through lower interest rates on loans, higher yield earnings on savings. Okay. Um, and that's the cool thing is individuals, and I like to say, individuals get to invest in churches. Mm. Wow. So every time we're getting deposits from individuals, and we have quite a few, we work nationwide, we're able to actually take those deposits and then lend it out to ministries mm. to help them grow. That's and awesome. so that's been a really cool thing. Is that, And then the other cool part is we're a full financial service institution mm. and we're nationwide in the ability to, if you put your money with us, now we can also do your home loan with great rates. We can mm. do your auto loans with great rates. Yeah. And then churches also benefit with all cash management services that we offer. So what differentiates us first off is more of just our heart to serve mm -hmm. um, and that we don't exist to make profit. We exist to actually serve ministries and mm -hmm. individuals. And so that I came out of commercial banking. I've been in commercial lending for over 20 something years and my heart is to serve ministries. Mm -hmm. So this is why I do it. I love it. Um, I love working with ministries. I like to see how we can put them in financially healthy products mm -hmm. um, and really just help and serve them to help them grow. So um, it's cool. Um, right now, is a, there's more of a construction season going on right now. Mm -hmm. So we get to see a lot more churches that are building yeah. and we get to be a part of that. And that's always fun, right? You get yeah. to see, mm -hmm. go from nothing to a building up mm -hmm. or helping ministries that are coming out of leasing space to buying some space. Mm -hmm. And that's also cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and a little thing about us at Christian Community Credit Union is we like to say we want to serve ministries in all life stages. So we mm -hmm. have a church plant package for mm -hmm. ministries to start off, which includes the easy tithe. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's get a giving platform to them. And then the part of what we call momentum growth, where ministries mm -hmm. are able to grow from a lease space and we're helping them with equipment. We're helping them get into a building. Yeah. Then we have those strategic growth ministries, right? Those are the large ministries that are growing. They have a strategy in place mm -hmm. and we're helping them with that. And then we have the multiply. Those are the ones that are trying to figure out, do we plant a church? Mm -hmm. Do we go ahead and do a multi-site? What are we going to do? And so we're, we're want to be able to help them in all those phases. So that. that's cool. Yeah. That I did not know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think too, that the, if we are both individually and, you know, corporately as, as ministries or churches mm -hmm. or, you know, as, as organizations, whatever you want to say, if you're responsible to steward what's been given to you, yeah. mm -hmm. I think, you know, the ability to steward it in a way that, um, you know, money is going back into the church, back into the kingdom, yeah. back mm -hmm. into the mission. Yeah, um, yeah I think well, that's really cool. It almost makes like our responsibility, and I'm, this may be a stretch, but if my responsibility is to tithe and to give an offering, if I'm also doing it through a banking partner that's doing that on my behalf without even, I like I'm multiplying yeah. my mm. generosity uh -huh. just by where I'm choosing to store my money. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's super cool, right? I'm going to change it's, banks now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, the, it's the whole yeah. idea. I have no idea. Of, I'm not being a good steward. <laughs> making sure that we're like minded in what we're doing, right? right? And it's supporting the things. In, then it's effortless, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's like, wait, I don't have to do all of it. I can just, one, put it there mm -hmm. and any of my dollars are invested. Right. And then at the same time, knowing that you're going to get the best rates possible because you're part mm -hmm. of a credit union, part of that membership. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so those are all the pieces that come along with it. It's, it's really cool. It is yeah. a cool setup. I love, I love that. What, what have you seen? Um, this is kind of um, talking about churches in particular. So we talked about people, you know, adopting digital tools and, and that sort of thing for stewardship. But I know there's also a part of it that's, okay, now that you've 
the money's been given. What do mm -hmm. you do with it? How do you steward it? You know, what have, what have you seen as some either mistakes or things that churches have done where they realize or get to the point where like, man, we have not stewarded our resources well. Yeah. Um, you know, especially as people are trying to navigate, you know, this, this economic season that we're in. Yeah. Well, I think there's a couple different things that ministries are having to work through is how much reserves do they need to keep? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a constant conversation. And there's no formula, one formula for any ministry. Um, it's going to depend on the complexity of the ministry and the size of the ministry. Because um, we work with everything from a church to Christian schools. Okay. And a Christian school is very different from a church. Mm -hmm. Now, the reserves a Christian school is going to need to keep, or a church that has a school needs to keep, the amount of employees you have is it going to increase the amount of reserves that you're going to need because right. sure. a lot of those fixed expenses is what you're going to need to reserve for. And so what we're finding is, and when we talk to ministries is a lot of them trying to figure out how much reserves to keep, how much do they need? And those are the parts is really having that discussion with them. And some of them, you know, cash is built up and they're trying to figure out they don't want to hold on to cash forever and they're not intended to, yeah. but they do need some type of reserves as they go forward. So I think some of the things is working through really the, what is the right amount? Yeah. And it's really, it has to be looking at each into individual ministry and what is needed for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm, I'm just making the comparison to my, to myself for thinking about, I would go to a financial planner mm -hmm. or, you know, my accountant and say, here's some of my goals. Yep. I've got two daughters, love for them to go to college. Yep. So like, how am I planning for that? Are churches similar where yeah. they can come in and say, here's some of our goals. Yep. What do we need to do? Yeah. Where do we need to budget? And like, do you get to have the super fun conversation? Like you're spending too much. <laughs> like, you know I mean, like, those are not fun conversations, yeah. but no, they're, is it yeah. similar? We do. We, there's certainly sometimes those awkward conversations sure. we do have to have, but if, if we talk with ministries early mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. so when I talk about the different life stages, if I talk to a ministry that's leasing space mm -hmm. and they're saying, Hey, they, they come to us and they're talking to us and they're saying, we would like to buy our own space. Mm -hmm. um, and we have just a, a goal to do this is what we want to do. The parts now we have to talk about is like, okay, how much can you afford? Yeah. Um, so what does that look like? And then the other part is how much do you have to put down to get into that property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of churches, especially if they've come from a very early stage to that stage, don't really know the process. Sure. And so it's really... We are communicating and educating them on, okay, down payment on a commercial property is 30% down payment. It's not like a home loan. Yeah. And so that's one could be mm -hmm. eye-opening for them. And then the other part is how much can I borrow? And so mm -hmm. there's certain ratios that we will look at and we'll explain what those ratios mm -hmm. are to them. So if we're saying, hey, we don't want to see your, your total contributions that are coming in, you shouldn't have a loan greater than three times that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where you're, if you go ahead, if you go further than that, in our opinion, is where leverage is starting to get a bit mm -hmm. high. And what I like to say is ministries are not built to pay for a mortgage. They're there to do ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. so we want to make sure that that's appropriate. And so yeah. those are some of the ratios that we're going to talk through, walk them through, and even say, okay, here's some of the things. If they're from a spending perspective, they're already overspending. Yeah. And that's also a problem. It's like, no, you, you need to look at expenses, cut expenses, yeah. and then look at how you can get the savings put together mm -hmm. and get them set up for the future. Um, yeah. But it's really cool. As sometimes there are difficult conversations, there's a lot of cool conversations because mm -hmm. we're setting them up for the future. Yeah. And I think those are good conversations. Yeah. Well, and I have to imagine too, because I, th I think one of the advantages too of, of churches working with you all and, and, and people who are are there for the purpose, the same purpose that they are, yeah. um, is there's, it's not just, Hey, I want your business, right. <laughs> you know, right. it's, I want you to succeed in what you're doing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there's, it's not just, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear so that, mm -hmm. you know, this, this goes yeah. down, but I'm going to really help you mm -hmm. so that you're thriving 10, 15, 20 years from now, exactly. right. not saddled with debt and in a, in a, in a right. you know, tricky spot. So. Well, it's got to be different than, again, a, a traditional lender, even a traditional business where it's like, well, if you fail, that's too bad. And I get to come repo your, it's like, you yeah. probably want to see that because yep. it's that, that like-minded vision. Yep. How can we be partners in this yep. to meet the needs of this community, careful planning. Yep. And it's, it's such a different perspective. Oh, completely. And coming out of traditional commercial lending yeah. and coming into this, for me, it's 
as a Christian, as someone wants to see the kingdom of God thrive, right. yeah. you don't want to put ministries in harm's way, which right. means I have to have, re- I just talked to a ministry, had to have a hard conversation. They want to buy this building. And they came to us and the, we looked at it and said, the amount you can borrow or is this much. It's not enough. Here, I don't want to lend any more than we should. Right. Yeah. And that's, wow. those are the tough conversations. I get that, you know, they want to step forward. They want to go forward and do this, but it's, I'm like, I can't be that partner in this yeah. because that could put you in harm's way. And I just can't do that yeah. at this point in time. Right. Yeah. Protecting you from yourself. Yeah. When, right. T- tough conversation, but yeah. then how, how much of a blessing to that church to, right. to right. have that conversation versus yeah. somebody who's like, Hmm. I don't really care what happens to you. I just want your... You right. Know, right. I overextended you. Yeah. And then three years down the road, they're yeah. closing because they literally cannot afford yeah. the building yeah. that you let them buy. Like, right. that's yeah. predatory. Yeah. I don't want to... I mean, that's, no, that's maybe totally, not a good word, but it feels like it. We look at it as saying, hey, we we do not lend to take back any property. Mm. Right. Yeah. That is yeah. never the intention in any of those things. Yeah. And so those are the pieces that... It, we have to have difficult conversations sometimes because of that, but we also do some great things mm-hmm. when we're doing loans for ministries that are thriving and yeah. able to, they're borrowing responsibly. And mm-hmm. I think that's what we want. This is, you know, debt is a tool mm-hmm. and it needs to be used appropriately and we don't want to put people in harm's way. Yeah. And so that's an important part for us. I yeah. don't know if it's your area or not. I'm just kind of curious sure. if, if a church is in that phase where, hey, we're leasing and we're ready to buy, we've got the vision. Yep. <laughs> we always have yep. the vision. And then you're helping them find the path to actually afford that vision. Yeah. Do do you or do you partner with people that do stewardship planning and capital campaigns? Yeah. That whole process to get them to the part where like, hey, we can break ground. Yeah. We can sign this loan. Yep. Yeah, that's actually one of the great things that we get to do is partner with different people mm-hmm. in our industry. And so capital campaign people, mm-hmm. we're working with different groups there. Nice. Or working with different design builders. We're working. So it's pretty cool because yeah. we get to be a part of a, it's team. a whole little ecosystem. Yeah, And there yeah. is, and actually as we're here at this conference, yeah. we're networking with we're all with those people. We're with them and them. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing work yeah. with all these different people, yeah. right? Ministry brands yeah. right, where right. we get to collaborate mm-hmm. with one another on different things. And mm-hmm. that's, what's awesome. Yeah. And so we're, and we're all like-minded mm-hmm. as we're coming forward on it and saying, Hey, we're here. How do we help the church? Yeah. Totally. We always talk about like partnerships and how in my perfect little partnership world, if you're at one of our churches, you say, Hey, I really need X. And if that's not what we do, I could say, Hey, that's not what we do, but I know a guy yeah. and I actually know them. Yep. They're good human beings. Yep. Yeah. We can confidently say, just give, give Mike a call. He'll take care of everything. Yes, and they right. go, Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. 100%. I don't want a church to have to just Google that. Right. Yeah. Cause then it's, you know, you don't know. I don't know. Exactly. It's blindly trusting. And like, I hope you landed safely, but yeah. I want that whole little ecosystem, everything from yeah. a building to lending to whatever it is, like who cleans your carpets. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I want to have a guy right. for that. Yeah. No. And that collaboration is just, it's so yeah. awesome because mm-hmm. then it, and it's neat because you build relationships yeah. And these relationships just kind of mm-hmm. help ministries and you're sure. seeing yeah. ministries thrive because of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I love like, it. I was a little part of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of our goal on this podcast is conversations that help empower healthy churches. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we ask everybody is in your opinion, what's one essential component of a healthy church? Hmm. First, love Jesus. Yeah. It's a good yeah. start. <laughs> love Jesus and yeah. then love the people around you. I think that you start there. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's it's really good stewardship of what God's given you, whatever resources or whatever gifts, whether it's financial, yeah. whether it's talent, whatever mm-hmm. those things are, are, is making sure that, hey, let's go ahead and be a good steward. Because all of this, as we said, mm-hmm. act of worship is like, hey, give to God mm-hmm. what is God. Yeah. yeah it's and not so, ours in the first place. Yeah. And he's given us it, whether it's our time, whether our talent, or whether it's our money, it's yeah. like making sure we're, we're good stewards with it. Yeah. And I think stewardship is, it's interesting. We, we ask people about, we as an organization ask people about stewardship and it's not a term used outside Mm-mm. of the church very much. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things that we just need to educate. What is stewardship, right? Yeah. We're, what we're does managers that even mean? of God's resources. Yeah. And so it's like, how do we manage that well? And I think that's a key part, right? Like first love God, love people, and then steward really well, manage what resources God has given you. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that. We use a lot of Bible words yeah, and then we don't ever explain what they mean. Right. No, truly, yeah. I... 
um, led a nonprofit and we talked about stewardship and I, I just thought of money. Yep. Stewarding people, stewarding donors, stewarding, yep. it was a hospital, stewarding patient relationships. Yep. Like I'm a steward, oh, I'm a manager. Got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. so, I know. Thank you for yeah. pausing and saying, and what that means is. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, uh, super helpful. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to jump into our final five. That's what sure. we call it. It's a little rapid fire. All right. Um, we'll start with this one. One book that you'd recommend to church leaders. Ooh, one book. So, and I'm going to go to an old school book because okay. um, I have my kids go through it, and I just think it's a key, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's, it's one of those core books that I'm like, oh, no, everyone should know these things. Yeah. And so, yeah. Great so, book. Yeah. Can nice. you quote all seven of them? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We'll like, wow. be proactive. Wait, in the win-win. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of them. We'll put them in the notes later. We'll look at yeah. it. Was, the saw. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's all in there. Yeah. Number two, what is the last thing you listened to? Last thing I listened to. Okay. So I've been on binging Timothy Keller's podcast. Mm. Oh, nice. So yeah. after his passing, I was yeah. like, I, I had listened to it, you know, previously and just got into, mm-hmm. and now I'm like binging through yeah. nice. all it's of binge it. Worthy. And I'm like, wow, um, good stuff. So, yeah. and yeah. And Excellent answer. Yeah. So yeah. That's great. So that's been a cool one. Yeah. What is uh, third one? What is your favorite piece of technology? And you can't see your phone. It's a rule. Okay. <laughs> favorite piece of technology can't be my phone. Um, that's a tough one. While you're thinking, I love that we vetoed the phone because everybody goes, it's my... Mm. I know, I know. I know. Wait, what? I know. I'm like, I know. Yep. It's, it's a yeah. super computer in our pocket. Well, okay. I, so I will say my family, we tend to use Alexa. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So all of our smart speakers and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, hey, Alexa, turn off the lights. Alexa, yeah. do everything. Right. Hey, Alexa, play yeah. this music. Yep. And Also, um, I hope somebody's yeah. listening to this at home with their speakers loud with <laughs> Alexa. And now it's going crazy. It's going we, we normally record this in our homes and someone said it and mine lit yeah. up. I'm like, shh, yeah, she's, she's listening she's to listening. everything. Yeah. I know. Yeah. She's awesome. everywhere. So we, we do use Alexa a lot. And so, yeah. So I would say, nice. I'm like, yeah, that's probably daily. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just told Alexa to connect to my vacuum cleaner. So I can oh. say, Alexa, clean the floors. Yeah. And she does. It's, it's amazing. so good. So <laughs> have you named your vacuum cleaner? I know. It's just Alexa, clean the floors. So, I need to name her. Yeah. So I, I named, uh, we named our vacuum. So it's Rosie from the from Jetsons. From the Jetsons. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. That's so, awesome. And we actually talk about our vacuum cleaner. Like, <laughs> Brilliant. We're like, oh, Rosie didn't work. Or, She's oh, having yeah. a rough day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Rosie keeps bumping into Rosie. my feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Future generations like, man, they were so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we like it. We like it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, number four, is there a quote, a piece of wisdom, something that has just really stuck with you over the years? Um, quote. So let me think of a good quote. Oh, man, I've been mainly in Bible studies lately, so... Um, Bible's got a lot of good quotes yeah, in it. Yeah, no kidding. And now I'm like... It's like all of Proverbs. The right. whole thing. Yeah. There's a lot of wisdom and money verses in Proverbs. No, there is. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go in Romans. Um, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, and mm-hmm. we're saved through His grace. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. It's very humbling. Yeah. yeah. All right, last last question. Uh, what is, or, or one thing that you'd like to share just with our audience of church leaders, give you the floor. Yeah. I think we're all honored to do God's work, mm. right? And so as hard as it is at times, mm. I really just want to encourage them just to keep up the good fight. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, in ministry, it's just really difficult right now. Yeah. Um, we hear a lot about mental health. We hear a lot about just really tough things within our congregations. And so in a really divided world right now. Right. And so I think it's more of a, hey, just a word of encouragement is like, hey, stay close to God. Yeah. And just keep up the good fight. Because yeah. it really, we have the truth, right? Mm-hmm. And as as Christians, is make sure we get the truth out there. Because mm-hmm. yeah. all of this division, all this hurt and angriness, any of that mm-hmm. is only going to be healed through one thing, and that's through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just go out there, preach the gospel. Love it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Can you give people um, 
where to go to find out more about uh, what you all are doing. Maybe they want to get in touch or, or you know, potentially, um, yeah, start yeah. start working with you all. Yeah, so um, Christian Community Credit Union, our website's www.mycccu.com. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of C's in there, so make sure. I, I even have to do it myself. There's three of them. Three of them, so, yeah. Yeah, so mycccu.com. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll make sure to put that in the show notes and encourage everyone uh, to go, to go check that out. But we really appreciate your time um, and and what you all are doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, even as you kind of unpacked it more for us, I just think it's a really beautiful model to help people steward their money, help churches steward um, their money and resources, and then also pour back into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thanks for your work and thanks for your time today. No, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This episode of the Church Leadership Lab podcast is brought to you by Ministry Brands, the largest provider of church technology software. Over 90,000 churches rely on Ministry Brands for their single platform solution that brings together all the digital tools a church needs. From online giving to websites to church management software and more, Ministry Brands is leading the way in simple to use, innovative solutions all with the goal of empowering healthy churches. To learn more, visit ministrybrands.com.